Some people continue to wait for the best vaccine to be available in the market, notwithstanding the fact that we already have at least four to five vaccines available in our country. So what then is the best available vaccine against COVID-19? Let's talk about it. So if you like my video, please don't forget to click like and please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll be updated for any new videos to come. The Philippines has now surpassed the 5 million vaccine doses administered nationwide and the rate of vaccination continues to accelerate as you can see in Cebu, for example, we have lots of vaccination centers already available. And of note, there are more different vaccines that are going to be available in our country. We know that a country that has vaccinated a significant proportion of their population are doing well because they're now trying to open up their economy. They're starting to recover a semblance of what we used to call normalcy. So as more brands of vaccines are being rolled out, the confidence of the people is starting to increase. More and more patients, more and more friends are trying to queue for the vaccination. So data on substantial transmission, blocking effects from the multitude of vaccines are also beginning to come in. So we have more and more data about the effectiveness of vaccines in the real world. Now, one of the major vaccines that have been available in the Philippines, of which I am one of the recipients, is Sinovac. We know that Sinovac is probably, I would say, one of the most maligned vaccines for COVID-19, specifically because they are not available in the U.S. and they are not available in Europe. As a result, Sinovac experience has been limited in terms of effectiveness in terms of data collection. However, recently, the World Health Organization has finally validated, as of today, the Sinovac CoronaVac COVID-19 vaccine in terms of its emergency use, giving countries and procuring agencies and communities the assurance that here is a vaccine that has met international standards for safety, efficacy, and manufacturing. The World Health Organization has what we call as an emergency use listing. This is very important because it is a prerequisite for COVAX facility that procures vaccine and distribute to different parts of the world, allows countries now to expedite their own regulatory approval to import and administer this particular COVID-19 vaccine. So they work by assessing the quality, the safety, and efficacy of this particular COVID-19 vaccine, in this case, Sinovac, as well as risk management plans, including suitability in terms of logistics, like cold chain requirements. So what does this mean when we say that finally Sinovac got the World Health Organization approval? Because in the case of Sinovac, vaccine, the World Health Organization assessment included its safety, including on-site inspection of their production facility. Now, the other group in the World Health Organization that advises the interim body to approve COVID-19 vaccine is called the SAGE, S-A-G-E, or the Strategic Advisory Group of experts on immunization means that they have already endorsed the approval based on the completion of its review of the vaccine. So on the basis of the availability of evidence, the World Health Organization then recommends that the, this vaccine, Sinovac, for use in adults 18 years and older 
in a two-dose schedule with spacing of around two to four weeks. The vaccine efficacy results showed that the vaccine actually prevented symptomatic disease in those vaccinated. And in fact, based on clinical trial data, it prevented severe COVID-19 and hospitalization in 100% of the studied population. Now, although the World Health Organization in the recommendation did not have any approved upper age limit for Sinovac, it does not mean it does not work for our elderly. And there is no reason to believe that the vaccine has a different safety profile among the older and the younger age group. So the World Health Organization do, however, recommend that countries using the vaccine like the Philippines in older age group, we should continue to conduct safety and effectiveness monitoring to verify the expected impact and contribute to making the recommendation more robust for all countries. As of now, the World Health Organization in their emergency use listings have already approved for emergency use the different vaccines like Pfizer, the AstraZeneca, the Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna, including now the Sinopharm and the Sinovac vaccines, which are inactivated vaccines from China. And both the arms of the World Health Organization, which is the SAGE, as well as the EUL or the emergency use listings are complementary, but they are independent processes. So they do their own work, they do their own validation of the different data, and therefore, so far, it has issued the recommendations of this approved vaccine. But is there a difference between efficacy and effectiveness? We know that there are different variability when we talk about efficacy of the different vaccines. The high vaccine efficacy rate, for example, in clinical trials for Pfizer or Moderna, which are mRNA vaccines, were pretty much confirmed with real-world data. When we talk about vaccine efficacy, it refers to how well a vaccine protects the patients given the vaccine in clinical trials. While when you talk about vaccine effectiveness, it is the protection seen among people in real world given the vaccines. So we know that real world data in Israel on its nation showed significant 95.3% effectiveness against severe or critical hospitalization and 96.7% decreased risk of death from the disease. Furthermore, there was a prospective data among healthcare workers in the U.S. vaccinated with either Pfizer or Moderna, which showed an overall vaccine effectiveness of around 90%. Now, let's look at what we've been given in the Philippines, which is recently AstraZeneca and the Sinovac. Now, we know that AstraZeneca and the Sinovac, in terms of vaccine efficacy, was approximately mediocre in contrast to the Pfizer data. However, they have outperformed in terms of vaccine effectiveness expectations, meaning we did not expect that they will be this good when these vaccines are given in real world. So in the case, for example, of Sinovac, a short interval between doses of two weeks between doses in the Brazil trials and a highly exposed healthcare worker population may have contributed that the efficacy data was actually not that optimal, only around 50 to 60%. And likewise, the suboptimal dosing intervals for Astra during their clinical trial may also have contributed to lower initial efficacy numbers. Because we know that right now, the recommendations for AstraZeneca is at least the second dose should be three months to give a better boost in terms of antibody production. So we know that with AstraZeneca, the effectiveness for the first dose is as high as 80%, and the second dose increases this to 85 to 90%. Now let's look at the Sinovac in terms of real world. In 10 million people, 
given in Chile, it showed a vaccine effectiveness against moderate to severe disease of 85%. And in the recent trial in Indonesia, among 128,000 healthcare workers, Sinovac was able to prevent symptomatic disease by as much as 94% of the participants prevented hospitalization in 96% and prevented death in 98%. What does this mean? These numbers are really as good as those of the MRA vaccines, the Pfizer, and the Moderna real-world data. So if you ask me, what is the best COVID vaccine there is available in our country? All four vaccines, whether we're talking about Pfizer, whether we're talking about AstraZeneca, Sinovac, or Johnson & Johnson, have shown similar real-world effectiveness against symptomatic disease. Now, this is very important because when we talk about measuring the effect of or the effect of a certain vaccine, it's the effectiveness that we want because it's the realistic measure of how well a vaccine works if you give it in a general population. Because when we speak of effectiveness, it includes the general patient population, including the handling and logistical issues. Remember, it's easier to transport Sinovac compared to Pfizer and Moderna, specifically in our developed countries. We now know that we already have rotational brownouts in certain parts of the country, and therefore, that will probably be a big problem for Pfizer and Moderna. All four vaccines have so far, based on data, prevented symptomatic disease in 85 to 95 percent range. And all of these COVID vaccines now available in a country are all nearly 100 percent effective in decreasing the risk of dying. Of course, in terms of variants, we now have data to support that one way to prevent us from also being infected from variants is to vaccinate. So vaccinate and vaccinate. My advocacy in doing this video is to hopefully help more people realize that it is dangerous not to be vaccinated, not to put a shield in yourself to prevent you from getting COVID-19 infection. Vaccination is one way of hopefully soon we will be returning to normal. Again, I hope this video has helped convince some of you that there is no better way to be protected than to be vaccinated whatever vaccine is available to you. This is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.